take 444. <laughs> we are not very good at this. <laughs> it is not in our nature <laughs> to do this filming stuff. Today is Sunday, October 6, 2019. We just left Lagronio. We are on our way to Ventosa. Just a little bit less than 12 miles. We live in the United States, so we are saying miles. Um, after the last two days, we did about a little less than 35 miles. Mm -hmm, total. Total over the last few days, two days. And so we're going to take two short days. Wayne Camino. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear him say Wayne Camino? Yeah. I didn't want to not acknowledge him. Yeah. Um, this morning, the temperature is 12 Celsius. Malachi, get your calculations out and send me a text and tell me what you figured out for the temperature. Hint, double it and add 30. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> last night, tell them about last night, dear. Last night we went to a pilgrim's blessing at the one of the many churches. Big. Um, the, oh, look. Um, yeah, it was very lovely. You, We don't understand a word of what's being said, but we can pick up a, a few words. Peregrino. Um, it was nice. We, we um, had not eaten all day, so it was it was a little taxing, but we finally... It was added. worth a blessing. It was worth a blessing. Two nights in a row, been blessed by a priest. <laughs> I'm not even religious. But uh, after the blessing, we, we found a, a local restaurant and got some a good, solid meal. Lots of calories. Oh, so nice to get some good food. <laughs> it was, yeah. And, and the, the albergue we stayed at was great. Slept wonderful, highly recommended. Wonderful or wonderful. Yeah, I've stayed there twice now. Um, yeah, so it's a good night. I'm looking forward to an easy day <laughs> what about hills uh it's it's um what elevation profile yeah it's not supposed to be too bad um maybe a couple little hills but i'll take it after the the pyrenees <laughs> I'm not sure if you could hear that clickety clack clickety clack of his poles the people they make rubber tips that will give the people around you and yourself a better experience. Wish I was born on a mountaintop in the Tennessee hills. Something, something. That's terrible, baby. <laughs> Come on. You're going to be a Tennessee wife by proxy. you got to know Rocky Top. Argentina. Buenos Aires, el puerto de Santa María del Buen Aire. I need my fishing pole. They think we have food. That's a kind of gray goose. Oh yeah, the gray goose. Okay, there's they, they, they don't cover by scales. They only have partly along the top. They have the scales. You see them? Yeah. Uh, the rest of the body is not good to eat. 
Yes. Oh, good yeah, to eat. In Germany, in some parts of Germany, it's it's a very popular fish. They eat it. They eat the carp at Christmas time. Well, as two fishermen, we need our poles. <laughs> I think you'd be having a, a heyday here if you could just put in the right the right bait. Yeah. He's just going to lay down and have a snack. Right back there, we were in a tunnel. Melody was attempting to sing Rocky Top Tennessee, <laughs> which is a requirement if you marry a Tennessean. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> and I said, or I sang the part about, I wish I was born on a mountaintop, Rocky Top Tennessee. And this man turns around and says, do you wish you were born in Tennessee? Or, right? Uh, do you really? Do you really? <laughs> and I was like, what? And that started what a fascinating conversation oh wow God. helmut from germany from germany we're gonna drop a picture of helmut <laughs> from germany let's see <laughs> he speaks five languages he's 74 years old dad get moving this man's walking the camino um, He's been to 122 countries. 122 countries. He used to be a, uh, a, a tour guide. Tour guide, and then the last 25 years or so, he's been an art dealer, and he has stories of smuggling art out of Russia. <laughs> uh, wow, the stories this man had. Unbelievable. It's yeah. like walking with a, a book of some kind. Yeah listening to all of the stories about Kilimanjaro and Nepal and whoo wee yeah. he's married to an American for 30 years um, and I guess the other very substantial part of the conversation which was completely uninitiated by us yeah. was uh, he did not mince words on our president from our country and uh, he, he first he brought it up. He first he first asked, um, you know, what what are your thoughts about your president? Um, and I said something about, well, why don't you speak frankly yeah. about? Well, feel free to speak speak frankly. If, well, he brought it up. Yeah, he did. So we we asked which him. Is not uncommon to to share his his opinion first and. Um, <laughs> Well, like Alex said, he did not mince words. Nope. Um, Whoa, did he not ever. Not a fan. He did, uh, being a German, compared him to Hitler at one point. Oh, so it, it, at points, gave me some goosebumps because I just, um, I don't know. He obviously was very, um, very passionate about his, his thoughts on, on our current president. And how other people in the countries outside of the U.S. feel about our president. And frankly, it's just embarrassing. It is embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Yeah. I would say I'm from Canada, but I don't think I can get away from it, get away with it with my accent. <laughs> I guess I could say Southern Canada.
I saw this in 2017 when I did the Camino. I didn't really know what it was. I still don't know. It seems to have gotten a whole lot more colorful. Oh, wow. Look at this deer. <laughs> That's sweet. So last night we, when we stayed in Lagronia, we stayed in Albergay, a really nice place. It's also kind of like a hotel on the other side, but the Albergay is fantastic. Did we take pictures? Uh -huh. Okay, so we'll probably put those in the video, but we stayed with a woman from Texas who had arrived in Barcelona and had her cell phone boosted or pickpocketed out of her backpack and it was a brand new iPhone it wasn't even 24 hours old so the she had spent two weeks in Barcelona right and did not back up the photos that she had taken to her iCloud so <laughs> it was a lesson for us we've been backing up when we've had good Wi-Fi but that's kind of our fear is that we lose our phones and we haven't backed up or they get stolen and we haven't backed up all of the pictures and videos that we've done for of our honeymoon. Yeah. We're being extremely careful where we put our stuff and since there's two of us we can watch but on the Camino there's not that great a fear of issues like that but in the bigger cities. So back your stuff up, people. We're coming into Navarrete. This is an old uh, hospital for the pilgrims, the remains of it at least, and behind it a huge winery. A bottle of wine coming between us here. <laughs> okay. I don't know what grandma's cooking, but it smells amazing. I think I smelled it for miles. Yeah. Smells good. Smells amazing. <laughs> it smells so good. Oh, oh, oh it smells. This one? Flip it over, they say. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> oh, yummy. <laughs> Fill up your water bottle if you so choose to. These I don't mind using because it's hard for people to put their mouths on them. Cafe con leches in one day. Big day. <laughs> <laughs> Although for the size you normally drink, that's like a, just a fraction. A fraction. <laughs>
So this is one of the cool things that happens along the Camino is you just kind of happen upon some incredibly rich history. Um, and so what we're looking at now is a wall and gateway there into the cemetery. Um, but over to the left is a church and the, the facade on the church and then what you're looking at here actually used to be um, a part of the Pilgrim's Hospital that Alex pointed out a little bit earlier that's now just in ruins, but that's what um, what this used to be. Uh, and it is now on the other side of the town. Uh, again, it's the, the facade of the church. Um, it was originally built in... 1185 and then it was moved by um, overseen by an architect in 1887 to its current location uh, again here on the other side of town here comes the future one walked through uh, at least two wineries yeah and we're seeing them harvest the wines or the grapes I don't know why I keep saying the wine because <laughs> I know that's the ultimate product uh, we're passing lots of grape trees yeah not wine bushes aka wine bushes yeah preferably they're called wine that's bushes. right and we see the trucks and we just pass them dumping in smashing them up with a machine yeah it was cool <laughs> yeah and for this to be a famous wine region uh-huh it's pretty neat um so we we are staying off of the stages recommended stages so most people follow guidebooks that have stages that you should do per day in order to get you to santiago so we stayed in lagronio which is a a big city of like 155,000 people but we're staying off the stages and because we're going shorter today and tomorrow um, most people are doing the stages so they have to get up and get going in the morning so we've pretty much had all day we have to ourselves to ourselves yeah and it is a lot less crowded than it was two years ago when I did it um, but I started two weeks earlier and I heard that this year it was super crowded in the beginning of September. Like they were having people having to taxi ahead to get beds and things like that. We haven't had any of that. We've also uh, done a great deal of planning and are able to navigate, uh, I feel like, better than most people because I have the experience of doing it and I know kind of how to avoid that kind of stuff. Yeah. But it's made for a wonderful day of walking. There's been great cloud oh, yeah. cover. It's, we've just been uh, like a leisurely stroll. Like a leisurely stroll, yeah. And, and in fact, we um, 
we've been in our Tevas all day because there hasn't been any significant elevation or it's been mostly gravel mm -hmm. and pavement which isn't the best for knees and joints and tendons and ligaments but it's a makes for an easy stroll in Tevas sandals. It does, yeah. yeah. Um, if you're thinking about doing the Camino, no matter how old you are, you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you're an 18-year-old kid who's like, I want to do this when I graduate, you won't walk alone. Even though we're saying we're walking alone, there are plenty of people you can hook up with that will walk with you. Um, some people want to be left alone to contemplate, to figure out things uh, as to why whatever's happening in their life and that's what brought them to the Camino but there's plenty of people you can walk with okay. little packs uh -huh. all day um, not today but you'll see little packs of people who we, oh we met a group of five who joined together uh -huh. at Casa Magica yep made their own little group made their own little group so even if you're like uh, Helmut from Germany who we walked with a little bit today he's 74 yeah he's out here doing it you can um, do it you can take your time take your time go as little or as much as you want yep. and it is obviously by now you've seen it, it's not a remote wilderness hike mm -hmm. there's lots of uh, infrastructure there's lots of support so I guess the biggest thing is just do something Get out, do something there's only so much time to live for the night. It is called San Saturino and it is in Ventosa. Up there is where the uh, the sleeping rooms are and bathrooms. And then this is just a common area. A little guest book you can sign. And then out here is a beautiful little garden. Up there is a communal garden where you can hang your laundry. Yeah, it's just a very peaceful, beautiful place. San Saturino, Albergue, and Ventosa. This is where we're staying tonight. It has a great courtyard to hang out while the pilgrims get here. And there is a laundry where you can use a machine or do it by hand. They have a great kitchen here. You can cook your own food if you'd like. Ventosa is an extremely small village. I think only a couple hundred live here. They don't even have a tienda, grocery store, or anything like that. Here's the outside again. I 
I just met a really cool guy in Denmark, Christian, who's taken three months to do two Caminos. Camino Francais and the Primitivo. Nice hand washing stations. You'd rather wash and dry your clothes. They have that option here as well. I, I stayed here in 2017 and I really, really enjoyed it. So I knew Melody would too. Melody and I are on our way to dinner, but I wanted to point out these doors that are these rope looking coverings that most of these places have. They're for uh, flies. They're real heavy duty. Y'all, this is a little ridiculous. I came down to go to the bathroom. It was pitch black in here. So I'm going to enter into a stall and hit the lights. Fantastic. There's the light. You get all of like three seconds to pee. Oh, wait, let me hit that again. Let's count together. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six. Okay, six seconds to pee. Mm-hmm.